All right. With this video, what I'm going to try to do is uh, define and show define the derivative of a function and show you how it's useful. So the derivative of a function f of x returns another function f prime of x, which gives the slope of the tangent to the original function f of x. So for example, with this cubic polynomial that I have shown here, okay, the slope of the tangent, the tangent line is just like in the in in geometry, you learned the tangent to a circle is a line that connects a circle, touches a circle in only one point. Same thing with the tangent to original function. So this changes, however, as we move along the curve, as x um, at, at di different x values, you have different values for the slope of the tangent line. So let me show you. Um, Show you an example here. All right, but before that, I guess um, we're familiar with the slope of a straight line, okay, from uh, basic algebra y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line, and in this case, the slope of this line is 3 over 4. All right, but the slope of this line doesn't change. So it's not very interesting for a straight line. So when we have a function which doesn't give us a straight line, we need some way to do that. Okay, so let me show you. All right. So the other thing that um, we're interested in in this video is the slope of a secant line. And a secant line is a straight line that intersects a curve at two points just like in geometry when you go back to elementary geometry this is a secant line any line that crosses the circle in two points but what we're going to do with the secant line in this um, in this video is we're going to let the secant line turn into a tangent line by using the concept of a limit all right, so um, let me show you, okay. All right, so we're going to take the concept of a secant line, and we're going to take the concept of a limit of a function, which I didn't do the video. Um, because that video is not as much fun, I think, as defining the derivative. But it is a video that I plan on doing is basically the concept of taking limits of functions. All right, and we're going to define the derivative of a function f of x as the limit of the difference quotient as h goes to zero. All right, which is what I showed you just uh, just a little bit ago. Okay, so here is h, okay, and here is, here's the rise, here's the run, and there's h for us, okay, and we're going to let h go to zero, and we're going to let the secant line turn into a tangent line as we do that. All right, but let's talk about some notation. Uh, before we go too too much further, because you're going to see all sorts of uh, forms of notation um, when when people talk about the derivative, this notation where you see df dx, this is called the uh, Leibniz notation. And let's see if I can spell that properly. L i b. He's one of the co-inventors of calculus. All right. Um, Okay, this notation is called Lagrange notation after another famous mathematician. Okay, where you see f prime of x, that means df dx. And I am typically, um, in my experience, I've used uh, mostly this and mostly this. You're going to see a lot of this and a lot of this notation. All right, so let's try. Um, all right, this is called Euler notation for very famous uh, 
mathemati mathematician Leonard Euler, and then the um, okay, and then the next last form of note notation for the derivative is you'll see f dot, and it's used mostly in the context of time derivatives when time is the independent variable, but that's not necessarily uh, a, a necessity, and this is called the Newton notation after one of the other co-inventors of, uh, of calculus. All right, so let's apply the definition of the derivative to an actual function. And we're going to do a couple of examples, and then we're going to develop an algorithm for the derivative of a, uh, of a polynomial. All right, so f of x, if we're going to, we're going to use this definition, we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h squared minus x squared over h. And it's very difficult to take the limit as h goes to 0 with it in this form because you're going to get division by 0. So we have to alter it just a little bit, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to foil out foil out this term right here. So be careful. It's not x squared plus h squared. You have to foil it out x plus h times x plus h. So you will get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared over h. And this was the result. This is your result right here. Let me see. Let me get my red pen here. This is your result right here of the of the foiling okay and i forgot my x squared right here okay so then we get some terms cancel out so the x squared terms cancel out and then because x squared minus x squared is zero but then h cancels out because of the division so that h cancels and one of these remains because one cancels out and one stays behind so the end result is and if i forget to put limit i don't mean to but understand that it's still there okay because we haven't taken the limit yet so finally we're left with 2x plus h and we're going to take the limit as h goes to zero which is a very easy limit to take and that's going to give us to simply 2x for our derivative of f of x so in other words this is df dx or if you prefer f prime of x all right, so what it means is, is that for every x value, for example, when I plug in uh, 3 into the function, I get 3 squared or 9. But when I plug in 3 into the derivative, I get 2 times 3, which is 6. And so what it means is the slope of the tangent line Okay, the slope of the tangent line at x equal 3 is 6. The value of the function at x equal 3, however, is 9. So this is the value of the function. This is the value of the slope of the tangent line at that same x value. All right? Okay, let's try another one. All right, so this one's going to take, um, so, so f prime of x, I guess I'll stick with purple. Okay, so uh, limit as h goes to zero. And of course, pause the film if you want to do it before I do it. As always, pause the video. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get 5x plus h cubed minus 5x cubed. And I get limit h goes to zero of five x cubed plus fifteen x squared h plus fifteen uh, x h squared plus five h cubed minus 5x squared x cubed all over h 
So this right here, I got by doing X plus H times X plus H times X plus H. So I had to do FOIL two binomials and then take the tr resulting trinomial and multiply it by X plus H one more time. And there's a, a algorithmic uh, simple way to do it using Pascal's triangle, if you wish. Um, but that's we don't have time for that in this video. In fact, I'm going to have to devote a little bit to binomial expansion in the next uh, couple of slides. So what happens here is fx cubed cancels because you subtract two identical terms that go away. This h cancels uh, the only one here. One of those stays and this becomes a two. And so what I'm left with is the limit as h goes to zero of, um, or I meant to cancel this one too. So 15x squared plus 15xh plus 5h squared. Again, another easy limit to take because we don't get any funny business like square root of a negative number or division by zero or, or something like that. Um, and this goes away, this goes away. And what we end up with for a derivative of f is 15x squared. Now, between the last function that we did, x squared and 5x, this function, 5x cubed, you may have noticed a pattern, and that's what we're going to look at next. We're going to find a general rule for taking function derivatives of functions of this form right here. All right, so let's say you're given a function uh, f of x equals a times x to the nth power. So uh, in order to do this, what I need to do first, okay, we need to take a little detour, okay, we need to take a mathematical detour and first discuss the, the idea of foiling, okay, or x plus h raised to the nth power. Okay, so in other words, what does that mean? Okay, well, binomial expansion tells us that what it is, is, let me get to my, okay. All right, so the binomial expansion is, well, let's start over, okay. All right, so it's in combination zero. Now combination, I could break that down, but again, I want to limit these videos to a certain size. But it's basically how many ways are there to pick zero objects uh, out of a total of n, uh, n objects without consideration of order, okay? So that's a mouthful. But your calculator will do um, do combinations for you. So it gives you a number, in other words. And I'm going to talk about what n combination zero is specifically here in a little bit. But let's get on with the expansion, okay? So this is x to the nth, h to the zero, plus n combination one, uh, x to the n minus 1, h to the first, plus um, n combination 2, x to the um, n minus 2, h to the second, plus, and since we don't know what n is, it goes on without it, it's going to terminate at one point, but we really don't know how many terms it has. If it, it's going to have n plus one terms, I know that, but we don't, again, we don't know what n is. So the very last term is n combination n, x to the n minus n, h to the n. Okay, and I'm interested in exactly three 
three of these terms here. I'm interested in this one. I'm interested in uh, numbers, I should say, or coefficients. Okay, if I can get this to work. All right, so I'm interested in this one, this one, and this one. And I'm going to tell you exactly what they are right now, okay? Um, and, you, and you can try this on your calculator if you want, um, where you, you go find combination. It's under a probability menu somewhere next to permutation. And you can let n be anything, like 11 combination 0. And you're going to get 1, okay? This is always going to give you n. So if I did 11 combination 1, I'm going to get 11, okay? In other words, it's telling me there are 11 ways to pick one object out of a group of 11, which, if you think about it, is exactly true, all right? Now, n combination n happens to be 1, okay, also. Uh, how many ways can you pick 11 objects out of 11 items out of a group of 11 if you don't care about order? Well, there's, there's exactly one way to do that, okay? All right, so I'm interested in exactly um, those three combination or com combinatorial numbers here, okay? And I'm going to show you why here in a little bit because we're about to plug this expression right here back into the definition for the derivative and then we can proceed with definition of the derivative all right so i did i had to take the little detour in order to do that okay all right so in other words all right so let's go back to black okay so df dx using the leibniz notation um, is the limit as h goes to zero of, and we have this huge expression at the top, okay? All right, so we're multiplying by A. In fact, let me, uh, let me backtrack just a little bit. Okay, erase that. Here we go, please bear with me. All right, so we have A, X plus H to the nth, minus AX to the nth over H, same definition of the limit of the difference quotient and let h go to zero okay and then what we dealt with on the previous slide was this creature right here how do we rewrite that okay so um grant me the strength to do that here we go okay so we're going to take the limit as h goes to zero and now we get our big long expression okay so we're going to get um, a x to the nth plus a n x to the n minus 1 times h. And please don't let my n's look like h's. All right. Plus a um let's see n combination two which remember i told i didn't even tell you what that was and there's a reason and you're going to see it in a little bit so bear with me okay plus dot 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 plus uh the very end so we're going to have, so at the very end of this thing, we're going to have A, H to the N, that terminates it. And then you have a minus A, X to the N originally over H. So bear with me, okay? All right, so all of this, right here in red is that expansion that we derived on the previous page, but that fits in right there. All right, so here's the nice thing is that, first of all, these two terms, oh, and let me, let me 
get one thing clear here again, okay? So this was the one in red. This was in combination zero times a times one times x to the n. This was in, uh, I keep writing a C, in combination one. And uh, there's a one right here, which was in combination n. All right, and I told you those are the three combination values that I was interested in, and that's why. Because first of all, okay, let's switch to a different color. Okay, so this term is going to cancel that term. All right, and then this H is going to cancel this H, and it's going to leave an H there. And it's going to leave an H in every term from here on out, from here all the way to here. There's going to be an H left in every term because there's more than one H. So the next term, there's an H cubed divided by H leaves you H squared and so on. But the last one being H to the N minus one. All right. So in other words, when all of this is said and done, we're taking the limit as h goes to zero of, uh, let me make sure I get this right. Let's see, um, a times n, x to the n minus one, okay, plus a combination, uh, I'm thinking combination and I'm writing a c, okay, so I'm thinking out loud. All right, so combination two, x to the n minus two times h plus dot, 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 dot. And each of the successive terms after this from here on out all contain an h. So if h goes to zero, that leaves us with this as our derivative. And what we have derived is called the power rule. It's one of the most important rules in differential calculus. You're going to use it over and over and over again. And we've just derived it. All right. So power rule. If you have a function a times x to the nth power, the derivative of that function is a n x to the n minus 1. So in other words, you take the exponent, bop it down to the front, multiply it by where, whatever coefficient you have there, take the exponent and notch it down one, take it down one, okay? And earlier I had said this applied to polynomials, but it will work, um, it'll work for any function in this form. N doesn't have to be positive. In fact, N doesn't even have to be an integer. Um, all N merely has to be a real number. And, and it will work. Um, I'm not enough of a mathematician to tell you why. I'm sure I could look into it and figure it out on my own. But um, all right. So so what we're going to do now is we're going to put the power rule to use. And what we're going to do is take the derivative of g of x. OK, so I'm going to use the um, what do we call it? The Lagrange notation. OK, so you see a lot of that. OK. I want to say that you're going to see the oil, the Leibniz and the Lagrange not notation a lot, and it really depends on the context. Okay, so the derivative of g prime is you're going to take 5 times 2, which is 10, 5 minus 1, which is 4. So take the 5, multiply it by 2, take that down 1, take it to 4. Okay, 4 times 2 thirds is 8 thirds, x to the third minus 11. So there's a 1 right here. I'm going to kind of concentrate on these last two terms for you. So 1 times 11 is 11. And what's 1 minus 1? 0. And what's x to the 0 power? It's 1. OK, so it goes away. All right. So let's look at this term right here. This is um, 7x to the 0, which is 7 times 1. What's 0 times 7? 0 times x doesn't matter. What 
the exponent for x is anymore because this is zero, okay? And that's why constants go to zero, okay? All right, so this is the derivative. This is the derivative of g. So we've got one function from another function. So this function gives me the slope for any at any x value for the original function g. All right, let's try another one. Um, so what we're going to do now is gonna, next couple of slides. What we're going to do is concentrate on two very typical um, problems that you'll see right after you learn how to take the derivative. One of the very very first problems that you're going to encounter is find the equation of the tangent line to a given function at a certain x value. All right. So um, there are two things that you have to do. You have to find y evaluated at x equal 1, and you have to find y prime evaluated at x equal 1, okay? So at x equal 1, here is our point of interest. So that's the point of tangency, and I can draw in a point of tangency, okay? I, I can tell you it's going to look something like this, because I know what a tangent line looks like, and I could kind of estimate the, um, I could estimate the tangent line, okay, or just by eyeballing it, okay. Let's use our calculus, okay. So the first thing we need is y evaluated at 1. So y evaluated at 1, let me get my notes, okay. So y evaluated at 1 is 5, okay. And again, pause the video if you want to do this before you see me do it, okay, as always. You can do that anywhere in the video, of course, okay. Then we need y prime. So let me find the derivative, and then I'm going to plug 1 in for x and find the slope of the tangent line. So this is going to give me uh, 12x squared minus 6. y prime at 1 is equal to 12 minus 6, which is 6. So this is my slope. Okay. And for any straight line, you need a slope and you need a point. So our point is 1 comma 5. Okay, so you need these two things. Uh, here we go. You need a slope and a point. Okay, so y equals, well, let me, let me do it properly. Okay, all right, so 5 equals 6 times 1 plus b and I'm doing y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to find my intercept, okay, this point right here, all right. So b, it turns out, is equal to minus 1, and y equals 6x minus 1 is the equation which represents the tangent line. There you go. All right, let me erase mine. There you go. All right, so that's a nice, pretty tangent line provided by my program. All right, um, find the equation line. Okay, so again, pause the video if you don't want to see me do this. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and pretend that you've paused it and that you're going to come back. All right. Okay, so the first thing we need is Y. And it doesn't really matter if you find the derivative first. It doesn't matter what order you do these things in. Okay, so y at negative 4 is negative 9.2. So I have an ordered pair. Okay, negative 4 comma negative 9.2. Okay, which is around negative 4, negative 9.2 is about right here. Okay. All right. So now my derivative y prime is equal to 0.2x cubed plus 1.2x squared plus 1.2x plus 1.5 and y prime evaluated at negative 4. So we use the x equal negative 4 we end up using that two times, in case you haven't noticed, okay? So when we plug in negative 4 into the derivative, 
you get, let me go back to black, 3.1. So this is the slope of the tangent line, okay? And now using y equals mx plus b, all I need to do is find the intercept. All right, so I get negative 9.2 equals 3.1 times negative 4 plus b, and b is equal to 3.2. Final answer, y equals 3.1x plus 3.2. Final answer, right there. And there's your tangent line. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so this is another typical question. You're given a function like the one plotted here. Y equals two thirds x cubed plus three halves x squared minus 18x plus five. The question is find the x value or values where the slope of the tangent to the function is two. All right, so we're working kind of backwards here. All right, so the first thing you need to do is take the derivative of y, y prime of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x minus 18, and we want the slope to be equal to 2. So instead of picking an x and asking what the slope of the tangent is at that x, we're asking what at what x is the slope equal to 2. So in that sense, this problem is, is the reverse of what we did earlier, all right? And you get... So this, this is a, when you move the two to the left side, you have a quadratic and you use typical quadratic methods to solve, okay? Which I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail. Okay, so, so you're taking calculus or studying calculus, then you should be beyond that by now. Minus 20 equals zero, okay? All right, so it turns out this can be factored Okay, but of course you can always use a quadratic equation. All right, so 2x minus 5, x plus 4, and you get two nice x values. x is equal to 5 halves, and x is equal to negative 4. And there's one. So this is, let me make sure I've got that color. Okay, so here is x equal to 2 fifths. And here's the other one, x equal negative 4, right there. Okay? So it gives you the location. And when we talk about location, we're talking about x values in general, in algebra, and in calculus. Because a lot of times you're going to hear people talk about where does the function do this? And where does the function do that? And what people are talking about is the independent variable, which is generally x, but it doesn't have to be. All right. So, okay, so to recap, what we did in this video was we defined the derivative of a function as the limit of the difference quotient as h goes to zero. And what does the derivative give us? It gives us the slope of the tangent line to the function at any desired x value. All right. So thanks for joining in. Visit barrytutoring.com for more exciting videos and work materials, study materials. Thanks for joining.